Welcome to a systematic approach. In this lesson, we'll discuss the comprehensive approach to take in the event of finding an unresponsive child or infant. When you find an unresponsive child or infant, it's often possible to immediately deduce the ideology. You should act quickly, decisively, and apply interventions that fit the needs of the individual at that moment. While there are various ways for a child or an infant to become unresponsive, the central issues that need to be addressed include keeping blood pumping through the vasculature or perfusion and supplying oxygen to the lungs or oxygenation. When the child or infant is experiencing poor perfusion and oxygenation, CPR manually takes over for the heart and the lungs. If they're still adequately maintaining perfusion and oxygenation but are unresponsive, then rapid diagnosis and treatment may be possible without CPR. It's important to differentiate normal breathing from gasping or agonal breathing. Gasping is considered ineffective breathing. Similarly, not all pulses are adequate. The rule of thumb is that at least 60 beats per minute is required to maintain adequate perfusion in a child or infant. The assessment must be carried out quickly. There is a low threshold for administering ventilation and or compressions if there's evidence that the child or the infant cannot do either effectively on their own. If the problem is respiratory in nature, then initiation of rescue breathing is warranted. If breathing is ineffective and pulses are inadequate, begin high-quality CPR immediately. It's important to understand that any case can change at any time, so you must reevaluate periodically and adjust the approach to treatment accordingly. Use CPR to support breathing and circulation until the cause has been identified and effectively treated. This concludes our lesson on a systematic approach. Next. We'll review initial diagnosis and treatment.